praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory, merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has mercy and compassion for the faithful. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area. And all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said to this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. So Jesus was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Holy Ghost, Creator, bless, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts which thou hast made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, please be seated. I am reminded of the time when I was in the seminary and we had the psalm that we uh, heard from today that says, Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. And we had seminarians who had just gotten off the boat from Poland in the seminary where I went to. And so... They had a hard time pronouncing English, and so they were uh, in, their, in their quest for trying to pronounce it correctly. One of them gets up in the middle of the church and says, Those who sow in tears shall rape rejoicing. <laughs> it says, reap rejoicing. And this is what we have to remind ourselves of 
when we find ourselves in the midst of tears, like I found myself in the past two weeks facing the sudden illness of my father, who all of a sudden collapsed and was taken to the hospital, and it was found that one of his stones from the gallbladder was stuck in the canal leading to the large intestine which then caused pancreatitis which I am told rivals uh, childbirth in terms of pain. So as you can imagine, this was quite the ordeal, not just for my father but for all of us who love him. And I, of course, got on the first plane that I could and went to be with him during this time in Chicago. And my father, waking up from his surgery in the hospital, says to me, you know, I'm so sorry for the many failures in my life. recounting one after another. And I said, it's okay, Dad. Yes, you have failed, but you are not a failure. Just like the woman in today's gospel passage failed, but Jesus was trying to tell her, even though you committed adultery, you failed, you are not a failure. This is our big problem in our life. We internalize it that the failures that we have committed in our life, our sins, our mistakes, mean that we are a mistake or that we are a failure. I said to my father, you know, the fact that you failed at your marriage or at this or at that does not mean that you are a failure. And he says to me, but you know, I, I failed in not following the recommendations of doctors who told me to avoid alcoholic beverages. Because you know, this uh, uh, stones in the gallbladder, it doesn't just appear out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, they told me not to drink and I just couldn't, you know, I mean, we're, we're from Poland. A lot of you think that uh, vodka comes from Russia, but no, you can Google it. Vodka comes from Poland. There's no wonder. <laughs> and he was told, he says, to avoid fatty foods and to lose weight. And to do this and to do that. And he says, you know, I failed miserably and I feel like such a failure. And I looked at him and I said, but you know, you didn't fail with me. I am here. Your other son is here, my brother. You have a wife that loves you, my father's current wife. Hmm? You are okay and you will be okay. Stop focusing on your failures. Quit telling yourself the story of the failures or you will start believing that you are those failures. I want to tell each and every one of you what I told my father. Stop it! And I leaned over to him and I told him, I love you. And I am here to be with you in the midst of your illness. Focus on that. Now, you know, my father was part of the Soviet army and they inculcated into him that men don't cry and that men don't share their emotion. He has all sorts of health problems that I won't get into right now because of the almost torturous type of practices that they 
were subjected to while part of the Soviet army that he was part of forcibly because he is an orphan, his parents died, and as such he had to try to make it and they forced him to be a part of the army. So they got it into him that men don't cry and that men don't share their emotion. You have to be tough. And this is one of the reasons why I never heard my father tell me back after I've told him so many times before, I love you. He would never ever be able to say it back. It took this hospital experience for him to look back at me in that hospital bed with all sorts of tubes to look at me and to say back to me the words that I long to hear all my life. I love you too. One of the many miracles from the hospital. How grateful I am right now for these failures that got him there. How grateful I am for those fatty foods. <laughs> Why is it that we just want to focus on and thank God for our successes when it's our failures that have made us who we are? You know, if you, if you never fall, you can never get up. No, my father has gotten up right now in more than one way. You know, he made it out of this. This is one chance for him to lay off the vodka, <laughs> stop eating the Polish sausage filled with lard. Huh? This Lent, I'm not looking anymore for people who can win, but rather with Jesus, I am looking for people who can fail and fail boldly, trusting more boldly still in God's love and grace. People who measure their lives not in their glorious successes, but in their holy failures. People who ground their identities not in their triumphing greatness, but in their belovedness by God. What, you know, I, I, I love this gospel passage. And the part from this gospel passage that I love the most is when Jesus gets down. Did you notice? You probably didn't because you, you were so focused on other things. But Jesus, the Bible here says he gets down twice. He bent down. The Bible makes it a point here to say Jesus bent down twice and wrote on the ground. Do you know what he was writing? The fathers of the church tell us. Do you know what he was writing? I love you. All those people around you are trying to stone you. But I'm getting down to your level here. You, the despised of society, because you failed by committing adultery. And they are trying to stone you, thinking they are better. But I, the God of the universe, get down to where you are. And he writes there on the ground because she's bent down. So he bends down too. And he writes to her a love letter. And he says, I love you. While all of them may hate you because of your failures and are trying to make you feel like a failure. You are not a failure. Get it? You are a beloved of God. In Lent, 
we get this amazing gift of 40 days when it is actually socially acceptable to admit to ourselves and to each other that we all screw up. That we aren't all we are cracked up to be or all we make ourselves out to be. And that God loves us in spite of our failures and that it's okay, it's okay to fail. No. Hello, it's okay to fail. Hmm? Give yourself permission to fail. Why do you have to always win? Hmm? You know, I'm, I've been asking myself this question. Right now, obviously, Putin is failing badly in Ukraine. How, how different would it be if this man would give himself permission to fail? Hmm? But no, he's got to win at all costs, no matter if the entire country is bombed, devastated, and millions of people lose their lives, or are maimed, crippled. Hmm? He could care less, because it's all about winning. How different would it be if he would give himself permission, which I'm giving myself permission, and I want all of you to give yourself permission to fail. It's okay. Hmm? Even if you fail, you're still like Campbell's soup. You all got a Campbell's soup at home. You're still like Campbell's. Mm -mm, good. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last time you, you, you said, I'm like Campbell's? Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> it's fine to be weak, for when I am weak, the Bible says, I am strong. Uh, my soldier father, who drove tanks in the Soviet army and who would never cry, was the strongest in his entire life, I believe, in that hospital bed. Hmm? Give yourself permission to do the same in your own life. For when you are weak, then you are strong. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.